Good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, November 2nd, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. Hermione is enjoying her breakfast this morning. And we are gazing this morning at a beautiful picture taken by Doug Eng called The Truth of Trees. Truth of Trees 4. the magnificent intricacies of the beauty of trees that reach up and weave their way up into the sky in relationship with one another, with the branches, but also always ever upward, moving and reaching. We continue this morning in the book of Revelation. Angels have bowls full of the wrath of God. These bowls, they're going to pour out on the earth. And when they pour them out, terrible things happen, like your body gets covered with sores or water turns to blood. The sun is scorched into, bursts into an explosion. Why? You remember in the book of Exodus how there were plagues that God sent down upon the land of Egypt in order to convince them to obey God and let the Hebrew people go. Terrible things like water becoming blood and frogs and locusts and eventually even the death of children. This is a similar reasoning that the wrath of God comes because we're not coming to God and God gets so angry that God punishes with the purpose being that the suffering that we endure will cause us to say, oh, we're so sorry, we want to go to God. We don't want to suffer, so we're going to come to God. But these bowls of wrath that are poured out over the earth in the book of Revelation, they don't cause people to go to God. They cause them mostly to either die or just become hard, hard of heart. Does God punish with hardship, with suffering? Even here, if you really look at it, it's not a punishment. It is a admonishment and it is a forceful in invitation. It is God trying to force people to please come to the divine before the earth is destroyed. It's God trying to make people turn, but not so much out of love as out of fear, terror, response to a tragedy. Jesus came to offer us another alternative to this God of wrath, the God who doesn't try to force, but simply hangs on a cross for us, dies for us, waiting for us, inviting us, yes, but never forcing, never admonishing, never pouring out wrath. But yet you see echoes of this Hebrew scripture God, even at the end of the Bible, pouring out this wrath, saying, if you don't come to me, you're going to burn. Well, we may burn if we don't come to God, but I don't think the most successful method, method is punishment. Nevertheless, every time that we go through something hard, it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to acknowledge our dependence on God. And so no matter where you are in life, whether you're in a joyful, comfortable spot or a very difficult spot, know that God is always calling out for you to come. And the difficult times might be more motivating. They might be actually the time where you say, okay, I can't do this by myself anymore. I do need you, God. I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to trust. I'm going to have faith. 
I hope that's the case. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to understand that the struggles of this life are opportunities to turn to you. Help us to see in everything windows of opportunity, especially in the hardships we must endure. We ask you to bless the sick today, Lord Christ, to bless the dying, the hungry, those who mourn, to bless those who struggle with addiction or mental illness, depression, anxiety. Help us all to lean into you, Lord, to rely on you for strength and courage, to turn to you in the hardest of times. We ask you to bring peace to this earth, Lord, peace to election times, peace to Ukraine, peace to so many countries riven by strife, to Brazil. Lord, give us your blessing and call us into your service today and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.